<laughs> One of the nice things about the color purple is that it brings relative newcomers to the screen, and you're not even relatives. <laughs> yes. And you're not even newcomers. Well, I am. Willard Pugh. I certainly am a newcomer. It's my first film. But Willard you've been in show business. Yeah, if you want to call TV show business. You're I've called been, a I've formidable been force. What is that? A, a, a formidable I think, force you know in what? video land? I think, I think what it means is that people watch the show. That's what it means. It means that okay. our show's been real successful and... Um, we've been able to do um, a lot of interesting things, including get ourselves syndicated mm -hmm. around the country. So well, that's what I think a formidable force means. Now, speaking of formidable, Willard Pugh, there's a story about a woodpecker suit. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I used to Tell work us for about that. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for Universal Studios. You're a lustrous career, darling. <laughs> for several years, off and on. <laughs> and uh, when I first heard that Quincy was like, trying to acquire the rights and stuff for the book, he had happened to be on the tour one day with uh, Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. And I was trying to get his attention to tell him, I don't blame you. Uh, who, you know, about me through the thing. But because of the mask and everything was obstructing me, uh, he couldn't really <laughs> hear what I was saying. And I said, you're going to end up being a pest, so don't. You just wait, and maybe you can get it to him if you see him later on a break or something like that. And luckily, uh, in the end, it all worked out. You know, I said, well, just let it slide, because I heard Reuben Cannon was casting. And I had been sending him pictures even before I ever came to California when I was in high school. And I said, well, you know, he knows your work because I've done television and a couple of the films before this. And I said, if, if it's going to come, it's going to come and just forget about it. Because if you don't get it, you boy, you will die. Meantime, you're taking this purple stuff seriously. You want to flash? Oh, this? now I'm purple. Oh, I'm purple all the way. Hey, hey, purple hey. all the way. Um, now we have Miss Blue over here. Oh, well, I was going to wear purple. I was going to wear purple, but then I thought, then everybody would say, see, she's wearing purple. So I, that's why I didn't wear purple today. But I have gone purple crazy. I have purple sheets, purple towels purple fur coat, had a fox dyed purple, purple, I am a purple maniac, purple boots, purple this, <laughs> getting my hair dyed, purple streak, putting my hair, purple, purple, <laughs> I am purple crazy, let me tell you. You yeah. guys are married on screen mm -hmm. in color purple, and your relationship is really fascinating. For example, Oprah, yeah. you come on like gangbusters in this movie and in the book. Tell us about your character. Well, Sophia is a proud, strong, robust woman. <laughs> <laughs> Who in was, that order. Yes, yeah. who was basically born before her time. She is a kind of woman who uh, ordinarily wouldn't dominate. It is only because Harpo chose to dominate her. She just is very self-assured, knows what she wants, takes nothing from, from nobody at no time, and uh, will not allow herself to be degraded in any way. And um, that is her great strength. So a formidable woman and a formidable black woman, especially yes. interesting here. Yes, yes. Um, she's a combination of all the, the women in, who I think make up such a strong legacy for black women. Now, Willard, uh, Color Purple, of course, is about women in so many important aspects, but your character of Harpo is an important black man. You, too, have some changes. Tell um, us about that. I think that Harpo is uh, he's strong and sensitive. And, uh, He's cute too, isn't he cute, honey? <laughs> <laughs> and, cute suspenders. <laughs> and a lot of times, you know, he, you know, I know people will just probably see the humor of the situation, but a lot of times he laughs to keep from crying because of the situation that he's in. Because there's a lot of things behind the, s the scene that you don't know about unless you read the book, such as his mother dying when he was very young, yeah. and yeah. then having to see his uh, s see his uh, stepmother beaten all the time. His mother was beat to death and dealing with those situations, which is all internal things that only me as the actor, unless you read the book, would know those things. That makes him the way he is. What about you as people? Any experiences being poor, being in ghettos, things like that that maybe unfortunately gave poor. you that kind of stuff? <laughs> you ever had a rough time of it? Uh, I mean, I have had a rough time of mm -hmm. it on my own because I chose to be in an acting profession. And as you know, it's not always the easiest job in the world. It doesn't always work out like we planned, uh, you know, <laughs> to get things going. So there's been times when it's been really, really lean. That's I such an interesting question. I bet I you've made a rough time no. of it. Right? I thought everybody was born poor. I thought we all were. Really? Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, you come in with nothing in a ghetto, correct? <laughs> I was, I was, but you know, um, I, I'm so, I'm thrilled that I was, you know, I was born on a farm in Mississippi and lived part of the time with my grandmother and part of the time with my mother, and from it came from a quote broken home. So I know all those people in, uh, in the, in the color purple. When I first read the book, I said, I, I know these people. I know Celie. I've known Celies. And uh, certainly, Miss Sophia. What about things like like accents? Did well, I'm from, into I'm from Tennessee originally, Memphis, and close so enough, huh? so it's real close to home. And uh, when I get back there, you know, I, the feel comes back, and uh, and so that that part was really easy for me. You know, um, us be born talking like this. Though. Yes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> was Alice Walker on the set? Yes. Yeah, Alice was there as, and she was our our dialect coach, so okay. to speak, because. Um, 
there were times when, you know, she'd say, there's too much Chicago in your voice, or say to Whoopi, there's too much New York in your voice. And we'd sit down and talk to her. She, Alice is such a wonderful she soul. Is. And she makes you remember why you're there. Ah, well, Listen, I know this is a stupid question, but do you believe in this picture, huh? Oh. 100%. <laughs> As if I didn't feel it. Oh. 100%. Do we believe in this picture? Yeah. Tell us about it. What do you believe in in this film most? What do you want people to, to come away with? I want people, I love that question, because it's not just a movie that, you know, you just go la di da and down to the, you know, local theater to see. This is a movie about endurance, and it's about survival. It's about Celie's quest for herself, but not just Celie's quest. You, I, what, what I want people to understand, that if Celie could do it, you could do it too. It's a, it, it allows you to know that we're all responsible for ourselves. And there's such great joy and love inside all of us that God really does get pissed if you ignore the color purple. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, isn't that great I line? I love that line. God gets pissed if you ignore the color pur purple. But through courage, uh, endurance, and faith, which is ultimately what Celie had, she believed. She believed, even when she wasn't getting the letters, that somehow Nettie was alive. Yeah. It's about faith, and it's about triumph. That's what it's about. And it's about putting on a juke joint. <laughs> <laughs> no? J-O-O-K. Yeah. That was the... Pretty uh, nice set. Yeah, great, yeah. great, great part of our history. That was joint. a part of him, you know, becoming his own individual man because, like, his father, most of his wealth came from his father. Mm -hmm. And then my, my house and everything in the land originally came from my father. But the only thing different was where after my wife had left me and I had nothing, I had, you know, everything, my world was gone when she left. Yeah. So I had to create a whole new world. The great thing about this movie, though, which is so sensitive on, I think, Stephen's part and, and uh, Michael Riva, who was the um, uh, what was set, it? Designer. set designer, set designer, excellent, uh, marvelous, is that Detail. they did not want. It's wonderful to see a movie about black folks where we're not dirt poor, you know. <laughs> Sophia and Harpo did not have the best house I have ever seen, mm -hmm. however. But Mister, I mean, he's 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 uh, not not a wealthy man, but he's w he's well off. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's they're, they're, they're doing uh, okay. He's not yeah, dirt not poor. the cotton picking well, things. Yeah, and, you know, all yeah, that they stuff. weren't pick picking cotton, which I think is interesting to break down some of those stereotypes because everybody believes if you're black and you're born in the South, you know, you always you're wearing, pick cotton. Yeah, and you're all picking cotton. Not that wearing head rags and chasing chickens. You know, but yeah, the only yeah. Ch chickens we were chasing are the chickens we were raising on, on our yeah. farm. So I think. But that's extraordinary. A lot itself. of things we cannot ignore in Color Purple, yeah. including Miss Blue and including Mr. Purple yeah. over here. <laughs> Willard Pugh and Oprah Winfrey in the Color Purple and from New York City for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts. John! <laughs> Sorry, I was getting it. It's okay.